local people, important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Enzel. Welcome and uh, good morning. One of the major social issues that remains center stage is same-sex marriage. Now, the passing of Prop 8 in California has highlighted the controversy even more, and that's what we're focusing on today. In our first segment, we'll be talking to a gay couple. We are talking to a gay couple, Jake Bowl and Ray Arkayan, who recently moved to, to this area from New York. Uh, for our next segment, we want you to stay tuned. The Reverend Amanda McCulloch, who is the former pastor for the Metropolitan Community Church uh, in Wilmington. Uh, she's presided over gay marriages and civil ceremonies and uh, is also in a committed same-sex relationship. And she'll join us in our second segment. But first, uh, Jake and Ray, thanks for joining us. Nice to meet you both. We haven't really met before today. Ha how did the two of you meet? Well, in New York. In New York City. Yeah. We went to, there's an organization in New York called the Community Center. And there are over 200 affiliated groups with that organization. So, so it was like... A it was a social, yes. uh, uh, mm -hmm. it was a group called Asians and Friends, and actually. Called? Asians and Friends. I see. And you had already I've been moved a member. to the United States. Yes. Mm -hmm. You, you moved from the world. Philippines when? In 1983. In 83. Yeah. Uh, and how long have you been together? It's... Um, 19 this year. 19 years. 19 in, years. In July, although we knew each other from the previous November, so it's so almost you were friends 20. and then... Yes, yes briefly another, friends. another so. level. And as I mentioned, you grew up in the Philippines. Yes, I did. What, what was it like to grow up gay in, in the Philippines? Um, I guess it was part of everyday life. Um, I've had 13 years of Jesuit education. And um, I must say they, they did a good job in you know, teaching Christianity and Catholicism. And they didn't teach an, anyone to hate anyone just because they're different. Your schooling was was such, but what about the social structure in the Philippines? Was that, uh, was that, uh, was, th was there issues with, with, with gay people in, in the Philippines? Are there issues with gay people in the Philippines? I think now the, um, the younger generation are definitely more active and um, accepting. Accepting, yes, yeah. yes. But it's always been part of the culture. And, yeah. and, and when did you realize that you were gay? And, how difficult a journey it was started it? out just realizing I was different, right. and maybe in, in mannerism or in thought, and I didn't think any ill about it. You know, being in school is just part of everyday life, and being accepted for it. And so, as you moved into your own and realizing who you were, uh, you had no self-acceptance issues. No, no, no. You always felt comfortable in your own skin. Yes. And, and in, in the social structure. Yes. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and Jake, how about you? You, you grew up, uh, I think you told me, Buffalo. I grew up in Buffalo. I also had a, had a Catholic education through high school. Um, a little more complicated, I think. The Philippines is a bit more open, and they have a so created <laughs> kind of a cultural space for, for people who are gay. Uh, a little bit more than, um, say, Buffalo street culture, <laughs> you know. Um, but I um, moved from there to, to New York City when I was just 18. I went to college, to NYU, and, and went to school in New York. And, and it was a, a, the, the social structure was a lot more open. In New York, culture there. I moved in 1969 to New York, which was about a month and a half after the Stonewall riots and, and all that. So it, but at that time, actually, I didn't come out until I was, till much later, till I was to myself until I was about 31. So you didn't, you, you knew, but you wouldn't admit it, or you uh, yeah, didn't? Yeah, it, it was a state of denial, denial. definitely. It was, uh, 31? Yes, it took me, it took me a long time to, to uh, deal with it, to process it. I tried, uh, uh, you know, the other route. I think, dating you know, women. Dating women, I actually had a very brief marriage, which didn't work. Um, and so I learned from, from experience that, um, the hard way that you know I had to face and come to terms with my own feelings and once I did I realized the depth of it that it was something that you know I didn't choose it's something that was part of me and um, from the very beginning but it uh, um, yeah it was a slower process for me and I think it had to do with the society I, you know I lived in um, the way, the way 
the way I were viewed. the way we were viewed in the way you grew up in school, the way that you know what you were taught ethically and so on in 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 a, uh, in a high school and what what about coming out to your families? Gary, what was that like for you? It was a non-issue. Really? Because my yeah. you know not knowing anything about the culture of the Philippines, I would have thought it was much more restrictive than the culture yeah. in the U.S. And and his parents are very religious, too. So, <laughs> so, but, I just have to be grateful for that. I didn't well, have to go you, through you did, there was no a lot of turmoil for being myself. Uh, and, and they were, did you, did, was it kind of understood, or did you? It was understood. Said, you never sat, sat down and said, look. No, I didn't have to, to do any of that. It just, and so it was never really discussed. It was just known and yes. accepted. Yes, definitely. I imagine you. Your journey was different? Uh, slightly. My mom passed away before, um, in, in 80, 81. So she so, never knew? So no, we never really talked. I think she knew, but we didn't really discuss it. And the with, elephant in the room, nobody talks about it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but with my, uh, my dad, I, t I spoke with him about it. And um, I mean, he was, he was OK, but it was, you know, he's, he wished that it was different, you know, that sort of, sort of thing. And he, he was very accepting on C. We, we dealt with it. Now, and I don't know your status. I know that you're a committed same-sex couple, but uh, have you officially married, had a civil union? Is there any? We had, um, actually, we was a Methodist uh, minister who was uh, uh, gay, gave us, a, had a, we had a ceremony in our apartment about 19 years ago, but it wasn't. In New York? Uh, in New York City, yes. Yeah. But it was not officially sanctioned by the state. It wasn't. No, no. Nothing it, was, no. it was simply a religious uh, event, you know, a community religious event. Um, any interest in children? <laughs> At this point, probably uh, not. I traveled a great deal uh, during, you know, for about 35 years, so it would have been hard on children, I think. Uh, and and uh, we do have a four-legged child, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, um, do you th are you, do you have interest in the, in the whole issue of gay marriage, and have you been following it as as a political issue? I think definitely. Yeah, 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 we do. I think there are lots of. It's not only our own experience, but that of our friends and uh, the kinds of things that they've experienced as as a result of. I think primarily the f the federal uh, benefits that people don't get. You know, the right of survivorship or immigration. I had a very good friend in New York who um, wanted to marry a, a partner from um, from overseas, and he had made tremendous contributions to society. He was a professor. He founded nonprofits that helped developmentally disabled. But when it came to his own life, he couldn't marry the person he, he was in love with. And uh, because of that, then that person was not an American citizen. So, so I think it you know, led to even uh, a great deal of stress and sadness in we're, his life. We're going to take a break. And we're going to ask you to, uh, to, to, to stay with us. Uh, we'll bring you back in our third segment. Uh, but uh, we're going to take a break. In our next segment, stay tuned. The Reverend Amanda McCulloch, who is former pastor for the local uh, Metropolitan Community Church. They have a large uh, uh, gay congregation. Uh, she's presided over marriages and civil ceremonies. And she's also in a committed same-sex relationship. She'll join us next. Stay with us.